So you can probably tell we've left the beauty of the bog and we're now here under the oaks in front of the science complex uh, right along Gordon Street. Beautiful fall day. We didn't see a lot of ants inside of the bog. Partially that's to do with, well we found some. You never get skunked looking for ants. That's one of the reasons you look for ants, because <laughs> you always find them. But one of the reasons we didn't find a lot of them is because of the closed canopy cover and accentuated at this time of year, it's, it's cold. It's pretty cool and these ants are really, really thermophilic. They, they love heat. We came back here to look at this colony because this is actually a really neat opportunity right, I don't know, 150 meters from where you're sitting to look at one of the species of ants that's the least thermophilic and it's called Prinolipa imparis and sometimes commonly known as the winter ant. It's neat, I think, for a couple of reasons. One of them is because, uh, where, to, where to start? One of them is this colony, this little tiny opening that may, you'll see on the video here, fraction of a couple millimeters in diameter, probably goes down three and a half meters straight down. Every foot or so, as I switch units, there'll be a cavity or a colony that'll go off. And the deeper you get, the more you get into uh, one of the other neat parts of, of this ant, which is that they have uh, a cast called corpulent repletes. And a corpulent replete is a first year worker ant whose job is to not ever come to the surface, but to stay down there and to receive food from her sisters. And they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and their abdomens become up to eight to nine times the rest of their body. They can't actually move. Then this ant, this cold tolerant ant, actually shuts down completely in the summertime. If we come out here, if you work at Guelph over the summertime, you come out to the Sixth Oak Inn from the Reynolds Walk and take a look for this colony, you won't find it. The colony entrance is probably been covered because they just, they, they estivate. They just go completely dormant for the summertime. There's other ants that appear to outcompete them. And so this ant exists in the spring. It's kind of the, the May long weekend and Labor Day to Thanksgiving. That's their, that's their real activity. So they get out and they forage as much as they can and it's the second year ants that forage. So the first year ants, they do, they put in their time and they become the corpulent replete. And then in their second year, uh, they go out and they're skinny, fast and, uh, well, faster and foraging. And so this little camera here is pointing right down the colony entrance. And we'll try and capture some video. And put it up on your core site. But you can see some of the ants coming in and out and checking out why. Well, for one reason, why there's a big bright light at the front door. So a cold tolerant ant, and I guess the last neat thing about it is that you'd think cold tolerant ant, you'd think, wow, Canada should be full of Prinolipus in Paris. We're sitting here in Guelph at the extreme northern edge of their distribution. You don't find them much farther north than here. So it's a cold tolerant ant that we are, that has a southern biased distribution. So sort of kind of a, a neat, uh, a neat scenario that probably has something to do with its, its long-term evolutionary history and, the, and glaciation, but uh, it's not a finished story as to why we see that. So if you like cold, and you like ants, finish your degree and study Prinolipus in Paris. Because the other neat thing, the last one, is that it's almost certainly more than one species. This is an unnamed species that you're looking at right here. Are there any other ants that have a similar feature, or is this the only one with the with the uh, corpulent replete cast? Well, in in Canada, this is the only one. Uh, the farther you get south in North America or around the world, you run into this strategy more frequently as a strategy for that insects that these that ants have for dealing with extreme heat and, mm. and loss of moisture. So they'll they'll have you see several times this this replete strategy in um, in the southern United States and in the Midwest. There's a, an ant called the honeypot ant that ant biologists, myrmecologists who work with this, they have as a rite of passage. They have to go out and take their spade or their shovel or their pickaxe and dig into the hard baked pan of the of the desert until dig down those many meters until they find this the cavities that have the repletes and then you have to eat one. <laughs> you have to eat what you study. And what I'm told by those who've done it is that if your uh, if your replete has been fed honeydew, it's sweet, and if it's been fed caterpillars, it's not so sweet. <laughs> but in that case, that's uh, an, uh, an independently evolved 
feature, but in that case to drought and heat as opposed to winter or um, I suppose in this case it's sort of heat as well since they're cold tolerant. Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. So, so they, I mean the heat and the other, I, guess, I suppose for me the neat thing, the other thing that might be happening here is that uh, maybe the, the adaptation of the adaptation for dealing with competition here. Okay. That they may be just getting away from the heat but in fact getting away from things that are out competing. Them I see, well. right. Okay. They're escaping something else but it's right. still an escape. Yep. And so that's, either way it's essentially during the times when you can't forage effectively, That's you might as well right. make use of a stored resource. Yeah. And so what I just said is also speculation, so if you don't buy it as you're sitting there at home or whatever watching this, go out <laughs> and test it and publish it. <laughs> right on.